Hello, Fitzbro here, and welcome to our second video in our educational series uh, covering the Lakota civilization. And today what I'm gonna be doing is stepping through an easy game computer and just going over the basics of the civilization, some of the units, buildings, upgrades, and uh, a few of the strategies uh, you might wanna try along the way. Um, this by no means is gonna be a build order video, but more of just an uh, overview of the civilization and some of the things that I think about um, as I use Lakota. So let's dive right into it here. So we've queued up an easy game against Ivan the Terrible, who's not going to be attacking us today. Um, it is typical at the beginning of the game, you're gonna expect you have your war chief, your villagers, and you're gonna start with one wood crate and the rest for food. And what I do is I will collect the 100 food that I need, and then I will send uh, all but one of my villagers to gather wood. Now this isn't you know as fast as I would do it um, in a typical game. But typically you want to get that first villager queued up, gather wood. Now what am I gathering wood for? It is extremely standard at the beginning of a Lakota game to build a trade post right out of the gate. Um, so what I'm going to do is collect the rest of those crates with that one villager and gather wood with the remaining while rallying on wood. Once he's finished that, I will pop him through the town center and I will start herding in that first hunt. Because um, if you wait too long, uh, you'll find that your uh, hunt will have wandered too far away. So, oh, I guess I queued up a King of the Hill game. <laughs> um, so we will build a trade post. I'll best build it over here just in case it <laughs> I triggered the King of the Hill. Um, and you'll see I'm gathering getting villagers and as soon as we hit that 200 wood, I pull them all off and we go to food and I will build that first trade post. So I'm gonna pause for a second. So that is my standard opening for most games. Now that isn't, you know, in real time how I would do it, but gathering 200 wood, getting a trade post and uh, getting that, that first hunt kind of secured. Now you only need the first hunt to gather the food you need to age up. I know that I used to spend a lot of time uh, get, uh, hunting, uh, herding early on, but actually any second you waste with your villagers walking around is wasted time for aging up. Um, and from here, we're gonna move forward and we're gonna keep gathering our food. Uh, I'll do some uh, minor, uh, uh, microing here for my villagers just to get that hunt in here um, but you know it's basic stuff you're gonna see in other civilizations as well okay now uh, I'm gonna queue up my deck um, if you want to learn more about Lakota decks uh, check out my previous video of my deck overview but I'm gonna be selecting my rush deck here that I described in that video and the first card I'm gonna queue up will be the four villagers now a unique thing about you know, all of the native civilizations you have your war chief here um, and that's why we've got that uh, home city shipment. I'm going to send my four villagers. Okay, and I keep my villagers queued. Um, with your war chief, he is, uh, I believe, the the fastest unit in the game. Um, maybe not. I don't know. Upgrade scouts might be faster. I'm not sure. Um, but he's a, the the fastest explorer. Um, now, in one-on-one -on -one battles against the European explorers, your war chief's not going to fare that well. Um, but what he's great at doing. Um, is sniping treasures from the enemy. Now, I'm not going to look for the computer right now, um, but right now, uh, you see here for the ability, he's got the Berserk Attack, which will kill a Treasure Guardian, or you can recruit a Guardian. So if it's a human Guardian, such, of a, such as a Pistolero, you can convert that per, that uh, Guardian. So I'm going to uh, take out this bear and take this treasure. Now, he will do area attack, in fact. So if there were two wolves here, um, he'd be doing area attack, which is a great way to pick up uh, treasures uh, pretty easily with the War Chief. Um, so the general strategy I like to do early in age two, age one rather, is sometimes you know to grab this trade post, pick up a treasure, but then look and scout where the other treasures are and kind of watch them to see if you can snipe uh, one of the enemy's treasures. Um, so right here you see we have these riflemen. I could use this uh, recruit guardian and it would convert him to be on our side, and we could easily take this 95 wood treasure here. Um, it is important to keep your war chief alive since he does boost he he will boost your unit speed going into the next stage um oh i'm gonna age up here and let's look at the different age up options you have here so the ones that i like the most going to age two i almost always choose 400 wood or age up very fast now they did nerf the fast age up to age two in the last patch so it's not as popular, um, but I still think it's a good option if you're trying to fast fortress. I like to a lot of games go, if I'm going to go to the fortress age, 
all age up fast. And then these actually will change their perks at, in the later ages. So you'll get more bison, you'll get a higher hunting bonus. Um, so this, this bonus, especially if somehow you can keep it until age four and then pick this, you can have a ridiculous hunting bonus. Um, so we're gonna age up right now with 400 wood. And with Lakota in general, I try not to be, uh, try not to gather too much wood unless I really have to. Um, so with this situation, we're gonna have that 200 wood and there's a few options of what you can do, do with it. Uh, you can use it for your war hut. You can use it for market upgrades. You can use it to drop a stable or perhaps take the trade route. Um, in a lot of games, I will gather wood during transition. Oh, uh, and I'll leave like one villager on there and I'll gather the wood I need for a forward uh, war hut. So I'm gonna send two guys up here. We'll capture this just to show you. Uh, we can do this. Now he's gonna take some damage, but then uh, we should be able to take this treasure. Of course, the computer is attacking my explore, <laughs> explorer here. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm sending two villagers out and we will be building a forward war hut that I can then ship units to, I can train units, and we'll take a look into the war hut here um, once we get into age two. I'm not gonna actually play out a, you know, a real game here. We're gonna try to get all the buildings down. Okay, so we're aging up. Uh, we've collected this treasure now. And another thing is you can run around and you can harass with this. Um, the, the outlaws are really great for picking off uh, enemy explorers. You just gotta be careful because they can still crack shot uh, your explorer. Okay, so we've floated a lot more wood than I, I would typically have, but we're talking through things here. So we're putting down our war hut. I, I like to usually send two villagers when I do that. Um, and it's, it's very common, kind of like any of the other rushes, like maybe Aztec or Russia, you know, put your war hut on one of their hunts or one of their gold mines, or perhaps a lot of times I'll put it by the trade route if I'm trying to, like on a map like this, if it wasn't King of the Hill, I would probably be taking the trade route and securing this section of the map. Um, so we are aging up, and I'm gonna just gonna show you the different buildings here. Let's see if we can get them all down here. Um, so one unique thing about Lakota that's new to Definitive Edition is you have to build the tribal marketplace in order to get gold. Um, it costs 25 wood, um, and I'll gather this wood, I guess, here. Um, and it does have a big button uh, upgrade. I have never used this. Um, I think it's too expensive. Uh, maybe it's something I should consider trying to, to, to oop, don't do that. <laughs> Um, use, but it, it is a, it sends you experience if you get this. I've thought about maybe figuring out how to use this in like a fort, uh, fast fortress or industrial game to get a shipment, but uh, I mean, I think it's pretty expensive. Um, so let's just keep grab, grabbing our resources here and I'll show you the different buildings. So here at our market, um, with the European sieves, it's very common to get your market a lot earlier. With Lakota, they get their gold upgrade right out of the gate. You do not have to research it. So that's a nice thing about uh, one uh, economic perk that Lakota does have there. Um, so as far as the market goes, you know, it isn't as critical. Um, the only upgrade I get, um, which I usually get in transition, is this hunting dogs, which is standard 50-50. And that is the only hunting upgrade you can get. So you've got to think about, you spend 100, 100 wood, you get this, and that's kind of the, your only use for it early on. Now, like I said, unlike what we're doing right here, um, I'm typically not really chopping wood. I'm trying to use shipment wood or the trade route for wood income. So I rarely get this lumber ceremony, or if I do, it's later on in the game. Um, if I'm getting raided you know, pretty heavily, I might uh, you know, use spirit medicine to upgrade our villager. But typically, uh, you know, hunting dog's the only thing you need there. So I think that's a unique thing about Lakota as far as the market goes. Um, you know, it doesn't provide you as many of the other economic upgrades as another civilization might. Um, now let's look at the war hut. In age two, you're gonna be looking at the Seton Bowman and the Club Warrior. So, you know, your typical archer, uh, pike kind of combination here. Um, and the thing about, we'll train up a few of these units so you can see them. Now you can use this as a shipping point like other uh, you know, civilizations that have uh, barracks that can attack. Um, so, uh, one thing about the scene is it has, you know, an, an attack animation uh, that has quite a wind up, um, and they don't have a ton of range. So I like to use Seton, um, more of kind of defensively. So I might use it to poke at them and turtle around, uh, maybe pick off a villager or pick off, uh, some, so they do, do fairly well against some musketeer units. But if you get rushed up by some Ashigaru, they're going to be in trouble. But how you can really make these units stand out in H2 is you can build the teepee. 
Now the TP will give a 10% HP boost um, and they stack. So, you know, if I build three of these TPs, that's 30% extra. Um, so, you know, in attack where you might be getting pushed by um, some musketeer um, early on in H2, you can actually turtle up you know, even with, you know, five clubs and, a, you know, 10 Seton can do do some pretty good damage. And I have some funny videos, if you look on my YouTube, of uh, crazy defenses I've had. I've had times where I've been pushed by Cav and I've done, you know, something like this and surrounded my scene at the last second and had a completely defensible location here. Um, and not to mention, you know, how tanky these make. I mean, look at these H this HP already for age two for a you know a cheap unit. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, there is a card you can send. I don't have it in this deck that increases the attack um, with TPs, which is a, a great card to have in a long game. Um, and I highly recommend looking into different strategies. In team games, you definitely want to have it. Um, and I've gone back and forth with having it in different uh, decks, but sometimes I find I want other units. So that's your, your scene, Bowman. You can also have a club warrior, um, which is going to have some good siege, defend your Seton. But in general, um, there's some sieves you'll want to take on in H2, but I find I want to get to H3 so I can have my Wakina rifle, which have decent range, um, and then unlock the different uh, cav units we're able to have. Now let's build a stable and look at what we can have there. Oh, I guess i got to buy some wood. This is not my standard game. <laughs> we're just talking through some stuff. Okay, so we're going to build a corral up there. Nothing special at the trade post. Looks the same as you know other civilizations, what you'd expect. Now, this big button at the War Hut um, does increase the train time. Uh, I typically will get this later on in the game when I need to spam units. I don't really use this early game. Although, I, perhaps you could... You could have some crazy strategy where uh, you pulled this early and uh, and maybe spam H2 units, but I, I find, you know, just just gather the wood you need for a second war hut. That's all you need. I don't know what the, what the computer's doing there, the villagers. Okay, so here is the corral. Now let's look at the big button option here. You've got the bone pipe armor, um, which makes your cav do uh, bonus damage against artillery. I actually don't use this a ton. Um, you know, I think hand cav are gonna do pretty good against artillery in the first place. Um, I get the upgrade at the uh, at the community plaza for the war chief to, to do uh, basically a one hit or two hit on uh, on cannons artillery. So I, a lot of times I won't use this. It's pretty expensive. Like I said, I try not to gather a lot of wood. 500 wood is is an ex is uh, expensive. Maybe late game I might grab this this big button, but not for now. And meanwhile, I'm just going to gather some wood so we can build our other buildings here. Uh, let's take a look at the community plaza, which is a unique thing uh, for all the native civs um, and an important thing to have for the Lakota. Uh, the The best thing that Lakota has at the community plaza is the the siege dance or the siege focus, whatever they call it uh, in Divinity Edition, um, which you'll see is unlocked in H3. So we'll have to age up to take a look at that, which we'll, we'll get there. Um, but taking a look at the community plaza, uh, you've got your population, uh, your, your harvest ceremony, which increases villager production uh, by 25%. So if you put a bunch of villagers on here, you can really quickly pump out your population, whether it's uh, a villager production or, or military units. Sorry, it's not just villagers. Um, you've got your gift ceremony, which is uh, your experience trickle rate. So if you're trying to get a shipment out, um, sometimes like if I'm walking my army across the field, instead of just having them on tag dance for the whole time and I have... I mean, sometimes you will have 25, you know, a quarter of your economy potentially on this. I'll throw it into experience until they get there just to get that extra trickle uh, along the way. Um, here, this will boost your war chief's uh, hit points and it will respawn him. So if you lose your uh, war chief, I highly recommend even early on, you know, having even just sure. one or two villagers to spawn him back. That war chief does, uh, you know, boost your unit's speed. It's very important to have him um, with your army at all times. Um, this will spawn uh, basically your version of the Miniman, the Warrior. I don't use it a ton. I've been wondering if I should, but it, it spawns a little Archer. Um, it can be great in a last-ditch defense sometimes. Um, I don't find myself using it a ton. Um, the Attack Dance. This can be good. Uh, even in H2, uh, will increase the damage your units are doing. So in general, uh, for Lakota, what I, I do a lot of times is you keep massing and massing units, and you want to have one decisive fight where you throw your villagers on here and you do your attack dance. Um, 
And I would not take big battles against, you know, a, a medium to large mass versus his medium to large mass without this attack dance. Um, it really is the edge you're going to need um, to get the most value out of your army. Then here you can also spawn healers. I don't do it a ton, uh, but it might be a cool thing, you know, to spawn one healer and throw him next to your warhead as you're, you're turtling. It, you know, it might be useful. Um, let's age up. And we'll look at the options here. You see already going to H3, there's been a boost. And this is where I like to get the bison the most. Um, aging up with the bison gives you 12 bison, which is a significant amount of food. Um, and it also gives you the 20% hunting bonus, um, which is great. Now if we go to H4, it gets even better, but you know that's what you're looking at. Um, so we're going to actually age up with that option. And another thing, not only does it give you that bonus, but, you know, typically I would have herded some of these in, but it does give you some safety, which can be really nice in H3. You know, you want to be raiding, putting some harassment on the enemy. Uh, to have these bison just right here at your home uh, is a nice safe hunt for you guys. Um, or maybe you're, you know, you've built your paws a little closer. You can jump off onto the bison very easily. Um, now, one thing uh, that I did mention about the bison you you, sh you ship is they will wander away from your town center and you cannot herd them, which is really, really annoying. Uh, I really wish that you could at least herd them. Um, it's kind of annoying to me that you ship them and they, they can walk away. So be careful. Be warned. If you wait long enough, your bison will wander away. And make sure you have that home uh, city shipment point set because I can't tell you how many times I've sent a bison to the enemy here at my forward base. Um, and while we're aging up here, I'm just keep grabbing some resources. Um, let's take a look at the corral and the units since we did not talk about these yet. Um, so the Axe Rider is the kind of the backbone, I think, of the Lakota uh, Cav Army. Hand uh, Infantry uh, does uh, some some great attack. Great for raiding. Um, a lot of times in a fast fortress uh, scenario, I might age up in age three, put down a corral and train three of these guys and just go harass the enemy. Um, they're going to do a good job if you can uh, attack a villager. Bow Riders is a ranged cav unit you can have in age two, which uh, you know not a lot of civilizations have. Um, in fact, look at them. Uh, I think uh, I guess they're not the only ones, uh, but it is. It can be very powerful to have a bow rider mass um, to deal with maybe some raiding pikemen. You can run out and take them out, or perhaps you're getting cav running around. These will chew those up quite easily. And a unique cav unit um, that that uh, look good to have here are the Elite Rifle Rider. Um, it is actually a unit that is good against musketeers. We'll queue some up so I can show you. Um, so they will be good against heavy infantry. So uh, you know a few Rifle Riders will do very well against pikes or musketeer. A lot of times I'll have an H3, an Axe Rider mass with a few Rifle Riders, and you can clean up whatever pikes they might have and then uh, be able to you know, clean up the skirmishers with the axe riders. Now, the rifle riders will get hard countered by skirmishers and dragoons, uh, or other anti-cav units. So you'd be aware of that, but they are good against heavy cav um, and very good against artillery. The rifle rider, in fact, your best option against uh, artillery, other than, of course, you know, getting hand cav right up on them, but they will uh, deal out a considerable amount of damage. Um, this is what these units look like. Um, and they got a decent rate of fire. But in general, Rifle Rider are you know rather squishy, so you want to have some Axe Riders tanking some damage, um, or perhaps some Tashunki. Now, this is my favorite unit, uh, but it's also, uh, it's gonna get gets mixed reviews, because they did recently uh, nerf it. It was extremely powerful at the beginning of the Divinity Edition. And if you played Legacy, you know the Tashunki was so bad you didn't even use the unit. And how the Tashunki Prowler works is uh, they they become stronger the more you have. Um, so, uh, the, but the catch of that is there's a build limit you can have. Okay. Now I don't know the exact percentage you gain per each one. It doesn't say, and I haven't done the math. I guess we could run them around and find out. Um, but what I recommend with Tashunki is I try to have. Uh, no less than like 10 together um, you know, as far. Now, late game, it might happen where you, you know, you're losing units and you're training them and trying. Uh, you know, it's okay, but they get weaker. Let's see if we run away. You can, we can maybe take a look here. I actually haven't looked. Uh, I don't even know. What the, there it is. So I kind of wish you could see an aura. Like, cause it's hard to tell. And actually, you can't even tell when it drops off. It looks like that was almost like a delay. If you look at its stats here. Okay, so this is just with a few of these. But you see already uh, significantly um, increasing the siege damage this is doing, increasing the HP, increasing the attack, and that's just with four from here. 
So they stack, um, and you can get a limit of 14 of them. You can send a Marauders card, which will allow you to get more, but it only allows you to get a few more anymore. I think it's like 30%. I don't think the Marauders is worth it anymore to get. Um, but the Tashunki are, you know, one of your stronger, this is your siege unit you're going to have. They also do splash damage, um, which can be, uh, really nice. Uh, you can see their, their, some of their stats here. Um, but they can chew up skirmishers. They even will do okay against, uh, musketeers. If you've got a full pop of these and you're running the attack dance, um, still be wary of pikes with these. Dragoons are going to, you know, going to hard counter these. These do have the heavy calf, um, tag there. Um, but uh, Tashuki would be really great. And a unique thing about them is they can stealth. And everyone thinks this makes them super OP. But check this out. They move pretty slowly in stealth. So it could be okay. I find that most of my enemies, once they know I have Tashuki, uh, have their explorer um, with them. Or if you're against a native Civ, um, you know, they, they have their war chief. Or, you know, most Civs have a tower or town center somewhere in H3. Oh, no. Okay, we have to do this quick. I started the uh, Monop the the king of the hill, I guess. Um, but that is a unique thing about the Tashunki, and they really do great in battle. If you want to see these guys in action, I have some uh, Tashunki montages on my Twitch channel, and especially I have some mon montages before they nerfed them, and you can really see these guys. Uh, I've, I've once killed, like, an army of, like, 40 or 50 musketeer with just Tashunki. I don't think you can pull that off anymore, um, but... Uh, they can really pack a punch. Particularly, you know, you got your Rife Riders mixed in with your Tashunki. Uh, you know, these guys will tank, and your Rife Riders have a high rate of fire. Um, so those are the Cav units you're going to be looking at. One nice thing about Tashunki is you don't have to research upgrades for them. So if you've got a mass of them, uh, you know, and you hit age four, your army, you know, instantly is going to get stronger. Um, so be aware of that. If you're if you're aging and you've got some of these guys on the battlefield, it might be worth waiting until you get that upgrade. Or you know, using these in H4 is extremely viable. Sometimes I won't even use these units until I get to H4. Kind of depends on the game. Um, if I'm trying to deal out some uh, quick siege uh, or just have some tankiness, I might throw these guys out there. Um, okay, looking at the community plaza again. Uh, the battle anger. This is your best chance at taking out those uh, that. Famous H3, two cannon shipment, right? Two Falconets. Uh, it'll give your War Chief 900% bonus against artillery. Now, it is 600 gold and 300 wood. Um, and I find that that is hard to get a lot of times in H3 when you try and throw down town centers, get your upgrades, etc. Um, but if you know your enemy's got some... Uh, has, has got some cannons, it's worth getting this, sneaking your uh, you know your speedy war chief around. Uh, throw some villagers on the community plaza and boost his HP because any dragoons he's going to have are probably going to shoot at you. Um, and you can quickly snipe some cannons, which is great. Um, so I think that's most of the upgrades here in H3. Uh, you know, there's the town center. It costs 400 wood, a little cheaper uh, some than some of the other civs. Um, and I'll, I'm will i just going to make an, es oops, an estate and a farm just to show you... Uh, the upgrades but we are going to head here to h4 to show you what we can build there um h4 for now i'm just gonna do the fast age up but you can see you know you would have got 30 percent here 20 bison you know these are some pretty cool uh things as you go into h4 i'm gonna fast age up for now now this is one thing that i i kind of dislike about uh the the big button system with lakota is that your upgrades are trapped behind the estate and the farm, which are very expensive uh, buildings to build as far as wood goes. And not to mention, ideally as Lakota, you should never be building, f uh, you should never be farming. You should always be using your bison uh, and getting the H4, your infinite bison shipment. Um, so it's kind of counterintuitive to have to get the wood to build a farm. But nevertheless, we're gonna need to do that. So I'm gonna collect some wood here so I can show you uh, the farm upgrade as well. Um, we have aged up to H4. In H4, this H Shunki uh, shipment, as I mentioned in my uh, deck uh, explanation video, uh, it's a great shipment to send. You've got uh, infinite bison you can send, uh, command scale, which boosts your uh, war chief's attack. Um, those are all great shipments you, you can be looking at. Um, now, one thing we haven't talked about, the big button at the town center. This is the thing that is used a lot of time in Lakota Strat uh, to make a timing push. Uh, I find myself using this in H3 a lot. Um, it will give you three, or it gives you one per every three minutes up to 30 minutes, right? Um, and these are also units that get stronger as you go on age. No need to upgrade them. So ideally, you know, they're going to be strongest here in H4 or H5. Um, but so think about multiples of three. You know your math. Um, try to hit those numbers as you're queuing those up. Uh, I don't know the, I haven't, uh, train, uh, check the exact train time, but I usually try to queue this up like uh, like eight 
uh, like six to eight seconds before I hit the minute mark. So I'll hit like a lot of time will be a 15 minute uh, big button or perhaps 18 or 21. Um, and we'll save, save up the food so we can show you this. And I will build the farm so I can show you those upgrades. Um, at the estate uh, is where you get your upgrades for the Wakina and your rifle riders. You cost 400 wood. So you gotta think you have to spend 600 wood for this and then 400 wood for this. That's a lot of wood uh, to get this upgrade. So you're not really looking at these typically till later on in the game. Um, and your Wakina will need it. They, do, they don't have the HP that they need uh, when they're not on top of uh, TPs. Um, and you can also, of course, you know, upgrade your, your gather rate here, which also does increase the gather rate at the tribal marketplace. Um, so be aware of that. I forgot. I didn't realize this for a while. I thought it was just for the estate, but it, it makes all coin gather faster. Same thing. The food also makes all food gather faster, including the hunted animals. So this isn't just a farming upgrade. You can train sheep and use this uh, like your livestock pin. Um, I don't do it a lot, but I'm sure it's probably something that's might be worth the entreaty. Um, horsemanship uh, is the upgrade you can get at the farm and it provides uh, more HP for your cav units which is great um i find like getting this uh i usually get this upgrade before i get the wakina upgrade just because this is a little cheaper as far as wood goes one thing to be aware of this is kind of a funny thing about the native farms is you can only get off of them from one side now why is that important if you get raided and calf come in from this side the only option to get away from them a lot of times is to walk towards them instead of just walking out the back. So be aware where you place these. I know you, I think you can actually rotate these, which isn't something I've really done, but I've considered. Um, but it is kind of annoying sometimes when you're trying to escape. Not as many problems here with the plantation or the estate. I guess you do have to walk around. But I do have found the farm has uh, put me in bad situations sometimes, particularly if you've got a, several of them built and it, it messes up with the pathing of your, your villagers or maybe even your calf trying to defend your villagers. Um, so as far as upgrades here, this is actually was unlocked in H3. It's the siege da uh, dance you can do, um, which is really, really good. If you're going in battle, trying to take down buildings, you need to have villagers on here doing the siege ceremony. Now, the thing with Lakota, you've got to have a delicate balance of moving villagers onto the community plaza and back to, vi to gathering. You don't want to just have uh, your villagers sitting on here all the time. Um, what I'll do a lot of times is sometimes even during a game, like if I've had built this here and I was gathering golden food and maybe later on I've moved over to gathering the golden food by a town center here, I will even delete this community plaza, rebuild it over here, you know, have it next to where a good mass of villagers are so you don't waste time having your villagers walk around the map. Um, one thing I did notice, there actually is a bug with the community plaza. If you build it right up against the edge of the map, your villagers will walk off and disappear. So do not build this up against the edge of the map, uh, you'll you'll have a bad time. Um, let's send our uh, Takala soldier shipment. They were called dog soldiers before um, in Legacy. Uh, if you played the Sioux civilization. And we'll check out a few of their stats. Now we are in age four and I'm not doing any of the extra dances. I haven't sent any of the cards uh, to buff these. Um, but you can kind of compare these to, let's just, you know, now this is an unupgraded ax rider, but now, these games have a considerable amount of siege. I've got what nine to Shinky here, but uh, you know they'll put out 45 siege. If I had, I'll just show you. We'll put 20. I guess I got 24 villagers here on the siege dance and watch these guys' stats. Um, and this is an H4, and I haven't sent my other, you know, cav upgrades. So let's watch uh, their siege here as I do the siege dance. So there you have it. That is pretty considerable, right? We were up to 130 there. I could get one more villager on there, and of course we could pull some of these other upgrades. But you know, 130 siege is excellent uh, for those units. You've also see this has boosted our uh, Tashunki siege. Um, so these are, are your best options for sieging. Um, an enemy against Lakota a lot of times uh, ends up being the enemy buildings, the forts, the, the upgraded towers in age four or, or walls placed close together. Uh, calf pathing can be crazy. So you want to very quickly try to siege down those uh, buildings on the outside of their base um, in a situation like that. Looks like our king of the hill is going to give us a time limit for today. So uh, I am not going to move into age five for the purpose of this building. Quite honestly, I very rarely even go into H5 in a 1v1. Um, so feel free to explore that as your own. It's going to be a lot of the typical upgrades you're going to see. Um, uh, your, your capital upgrades can be available here in your uh, town center.
um, and you will get additional uh, economic upgrades here and unit upgrades. Um, but nothing else extremely special in H5 for Lakota. So um, the only unit we did not talk about is the Wakina. Looks like we've got 58 seconds. We'll use actually our uh, our population dance here to get our Wakina out really quickly. And you'll see how quickly those train with 25 vils on there. Oh, good. The computer stopped it. <laughs> um, Wakina are kind of your uh, go-to... Uh, uh, war hut unit once you hit h3 i very rarely make seat in your clubs though i'm trying to uh mix clubs in a little bit more um but your wakina uh are going to be your skirmisher unit they can build uh, teepees obviously you can't build them too close to enemy town center i mean a lot of times i might have a mass of you know say 40 of these in a big battle and while i'm engaging the unit i'll quickly uh, be grabbing, you know, a few Wakina off the back and be building these because they build quite quickly and that can give you, you know, an extra boost uh, in the moment with some quick micro on your part. Um, Wakina are naturally lower HP skirmishers, so you do need the TP. You need something tanking with them because um, Handcav uh, will very quickly take them out uh, or, you know, you're going against European skirms. You're not going to do very good. Uh, you can send the advanced arsenal, which I do a lot of times, the new ways here, which then you can upgrade uh, the rifling at the TP, which does give them a better shot. And of course, getting the HP bonus here, uh, or sorry, the damage bonus here is going to, you know, give them a better shot. Oh, I was talking about the HP bonus you can get from shipping the two kettle support, which I talked about these cards in the deck video if you want to watch that. Um, but a typical army comp you're going to be looking at, uh, I like to generally run Wakina Axe Rider. Uh, Wakina Axe Rider with a uh, few uh, Rough Riders mixed in, and then I'll throw in some Tashunki for Siege. Um, but uh, you want to typically try to... Uh, use Wakina to target their anti-cav. So if they've got dragoons, you're going to want a lot of uh, Wakina uh, against Dutch, uh, against Portuguese, uh, you know, a lot of Wakina. You can use bow riders as well as a, a similar comp. You could do bow rider Wakina. Um, but against a really skirm heavy sieve, they're going to counter both your units. Uh, I like to a lot of times go the Wakina axe rider route, but it's going to kind of depend on your play style and you'll figure it out as you go. Um, but essentially, those are all of the upgrades that Lakota have to offer. Let's look at the advanced arsenal at the TP since I did uh, send the card. Um, the first shipment you're usually looking at is either sending the uh, the, the range cav upgrade, which gives them an advanced range um, and an attack increase. So this is really good for your bow riders um, or rifle riders. Um, and then this infantry rifling, which is good for your skirmishers to deal out some additional damage. You can uh, buff up your siege even more by sending uh, this, which is great. Um, and then, of course, you know, your typical uh, infantry breastplate, uh, your cav HP. So those are the Vance Arsenal. Um, these are really cards you need if you're going to play a late game. So make sure you've got that uh, European uh, Arsenal, this new ways card in your deck. Um, so in a nutshell, those are most... I think we did, we covered all of the big buttons at all the buildings. Not a ton of buildings to make, right? So if you don't like uh, you know com the complexity of having to make an artillery foundry, uh, you know, throwing down a... Uh, armory, some of these different buildings. Now, not a lot of things you do. One thing knows about Lakota, you cannot build walls until age four, which I do have unlocked here now. But uh, you need to use your speed and mobility. A lot of times, uh, you know, if the enemy's pushing your base, uh, you want to keep pressure on them. You want to keep their army away from your base because they could quickly come through here and raid your community plaza. Um, so try to keep some pressure on the enemy um, to draw attention away from your base. Um, but Hopefully that is an overview. Um, this I kind of meant this as a beginner guide if you're new to civilization, um, getting started, um, and and you know take some time and explore the different units, explore the the unit comps that you can use uh, for the Lakota. Um, but those are some of the things that I think about um, when playing Lakota. And for future videos, we will go over some build orders um, where you'll see me use some of these uh, army comps in action. But thank you so much for watching. Um, as always, uh, tune in on Twitch um, if you want to see me using Lakota in action. And you can also view some of my other videos against some uh, particular Civ matchups uh, in my YouTube channel. Um, and we will see you next time.